Welcome back. Let's go to Rockland County now, where the push for more state oversight over the troubled East Ramapo School District now seems to be in real trouble. East Ramapo, you'll recall, has in recent years funneled more and more money out of public schools and into private Jewish yeshivas, prompting anger among other parents, especially those in minority communities. The school board is controlled by Hasidic Jews who have been accused of prioritizing their children at the expense of others. The budget cuts for public schools have been deep and severe. Kindergarten reduced to a half day, summer school canceled, athletic programs cut in half, extracurricular activities also slashed, and transportation for field trips just gone. Back in November, a state-appointed fiscal monitor called for more oversight, including a long-term monitor with the power to veto any decisions made by the school board. He also cited the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court case to explain how dire the situation he thought in East Ramapo is, and that's not all he said. It is unthinkable that the state would give an extra penny to this district unless there are legal assurances that that money is fairly and reasonably allocated when it gets to the district. So the monitor says it's unthinkable, but today, just six months later, the bill that would create that long-term monitor is in real trouble after aggressive lobbying in Albany. With the new state Senate leader, Majority Leader John Flanagan comparing the monitor bill, or complaining rather, that it would set a dangerous precedent, and another assembly member who had been supporting the bill now reversing himself and suggesting that discussions, just discussions of the bill, could have anti-Semitic overtones. And Scott, you're, you're as familiar with this topic as anybody, given your uh, tenure as Rockland County Executive. What's it going to take for Albany to actually pass this oversight bill at this point? It seems like it's just about dead in the water. Well, it, it does. Um, Let's start. step back, though. <clears throat> East Ramapo is in, in very serious need of, of funds, money, and help in terms of how it's making decisions to, for all of the children and all of the components uh, of that school district. That being said, um, the idea that was put forth of a monitor uh, or somebody to be helpful is still a good one. And what I think Flanagan and others are saying is, look, this could go on in all sorts of districts all over the place. Maybe there's a better way. And the answer is something has to be done in East Ramapo. Something, something has to be done. And one of the problems with this bill, two problems as I see it, number one is because of the vitriol around this subject in Rockland County of the ultra-Orthodox versus other folks, certain folks, um, it's created this anti-Semitic kind of an atmosphere which people are reacting to in Albany. Secondly, and this is my opinion, you can't, it's unconstitutional, essentially, to take a monitor who is appointed to oversee a duly elected, I don't care who they are, board and, and, and veto them. So there's got to be a middle ground somewhere. And one of the suggestions is maybe the state controller come in and monitor the East Ramapo well, School well District. Hang on, Scott, because we've had situations in this country where we've had duly elected officials or duly elected boards or whatever the case may be that are not fairly representing or, f or fairly accommodating all of the people that they're supposed to accommodate. Think of how many elected officials in the South in the Jim Crow era basically allowed for a separation the, the, you know, they claim separate but equal, and for years there were, it was a segregated society. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, that what the decisions are are correct, because I think in many cases they're not. What I'm saying is, the answer is if there's malfeasance, you get rid of the board. You don't put somebody, you, you get rid of the elected officials and you establish, which has been done in New York State. If there but is, it's not, it's not technically malfeasance. They haven't stolen money. They haven't broken the law. I mean, well, they, they're, they're just simply no. allocating their funds <laughs> in a way that's not. Some fair are to suggesting <laughs> just that, and they're suggesting that the money has been diverted improperly. Some are suggesting a lot more than that. The county executive, and th that's a good point. You know, you can't just get rid of an elected board, but yet, you know, you you I mean, you can't just overrule them. But you can uh, possibly, there are other ways to look at doing sure, this. Sure, forensic audits and so, all the way through. And so here's the bottom line, Andrew, and full disclosure before I say this. When I had, my kids went to school in the same school district, and I had to, when I went before the board because of my son, we needed special services. They didn't want to give us special services. Mm -hmm. I had to hire a lawyer. Once we got the lawyer, then we got all the special services. But they still wouldn't pay for him to go to a private school, right, for my son with epilepsy. But yet, and, and I hope, yet because, and I get in trouble with my, with my accountant who happens to be Hasidic every time I talk about this. Um, 28,000 kids, all Hasidic, the public school system pays for that, for them to go to, to a yeshiva. Public school money. The black and Latino kids in the school district, the budget is getting smaller and smaller and smaller.
And so, but here's my point to the black and Latino community. You cannot complain about the board that clearly does not have your best interests at heart because there are some that question whether or not there's criminal activity going on. When you sell a school building or try to sell a school building to a crony, a political crony, for one dollar, there's something wrong. But if you're if we're waiting for a judge to basically get involved and say there has been malfeasance, well, there the has FBI been, has there, gotten there involved. Are, but those are investigations. And meanwhile, you've got kids who are still in this district and parents who feel like they're being shortchanged. Yes, it's a duly elected board, and they they're at this point they haven't committed a crime. Not that anybody's fully convinced of. How do we remedy the situation in a way that helps these kids? Let's remember that. Appointing a monitor is not uh, some dramatically new precedent. Uh, we've had any number of instances in which governments have been deemed so dysfunctional, so incapable of discharging their responsibilities that a monitor has been brought on board. For a period of time, Yonkers uh, was effectively mm -hmm. governed by a monitor mm -hmm. in terms of all of its fiscal decisions. More recently, Detroit uh, has been governed by a, a monitor. Uh, so we recognize that school districts, municipalities, they are to some degree creatures of the state. The state has a role in ensuring that educational services and other services are delivered in a way that's equitable for all the children within them. Uh, and so uh, there are instances in which you need to bring in a monitor. So w whether that is the ideal solution here or not uh, is not something that, uh, that I feel qualified to answer. But I, I don't think that this is some uh, dramatically uh, new uh, step you that, that be would careful, break, uh, break a mold. In those instances, there's bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is different, okay? They have, they're not a, they have very serious financial issues. And you're right, Dominic, the issue there, that p the children of color are not being properly tr educated. They're not. And what's happening here is the school board has made these decisions, but it's not a bankruptcy situation like Detroit. You can't just put a monitor in. You can do lots of things. But what I'm suggesting is monitoring is needed, but, but, but it may not be a monitor me, with veto me, power. Let me, let me jump in with a slightly different way. Where's the political courage in Albany? To go ahead and vote okay. this thing through. Uh, what, I, what I was going to say, and you have two great elected officials here, but, but I I'll, hear I'll, from just, you instead. I'll just cut to the <laughs> chase. Cut to the chase. You said, where's the political yeah. leadership? Courage. Where's the political courage the political to vote for this cover, monitor? Courage. My answer is, show me the money. Follow the contributions, and you'll see why there's been a change of heart and why there's no action in the East Ramapo. poll. And remember, they know that the Hasidim vote in blocks. So if you go against what their interests are, there is a political price to pay. It could mean the end of your political career. Scott, that feel right to you, that analysis? Look, I have won with their, with their support, and mm -hmm. I've won without their support. And sometimes you just got to speak the truth, okay? And the truth here is that the children are losing out. And somehow you got to get the education department to get in there or a separate independent, maybe not be this legislation, to make sure that money is being invested properly across the board. And I'm suggesting Aaron Weeder, who is a, a legislator who's been lobbying up there uh, in Rockland County, made a suggestion about possibly bringing in the controller. The controller has tremendous power here. And instead of creating some new entity, maybe that's the answer to really get to the bottom of many of the issues that m many parents would, there are upset wouldn't about. Wouldn't an elected controller also be subject to the whims, the political whims and the political power of what is a very hardy voting block? In, yeah, in but at community? some point, it's one voting block in the state for Pete's sakes. And yes, they have political power. But my challenge, and I've challenged people this to, to this uh, day, if you don't believe that they're properly running the thing, then get people to come out and vote. I mean, it, it's, and it that shouldn't is be. the issue. The black and Latino community, I just need to say That's this. That's fair. That's fair. It's complaining, right? Okay, well, if, if it, it's, it's disgusting what's going on. Public tax dollars, 28,000, 29,000 kids, Hasidim kids, and yeshiva private universities, and the public school kids are getting no money. So then you got to turn out in the same block votes as other communities and put but in your representatives. But my counter argument to that, Dominic, is that, well, if more blacks had gone out and voted in Alabama in 1952, you wouldn't have had to wait for the civil rights movement in the 1960s. You could have just elected no, yourself. No, yeah, that, but no, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, but it, it doesn't matter who's elected. There is still a responsibility towards treating everybody equally and, and, uh, no, and but doing the, the job but, fairly. But come on now. We're talking about politics and money. Responsibility went out the window yeah, a long but, time ago. But those aren't mutually exclusive solutions. You can argue that people ought to be more engaged mm -hmm. in voting at higher rates. And mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. in the here and now, if there's a problem, you use whatever institutions you have to try to address that problem. The one thing I'll add to the politics of it is there is a, a legitimate concern, I think, that people have about being misperceived as anti-Semitic.
Yes. And, and when you have religion or identity politics mixed into a public policy question like this, it is enormously difficult to pick your way through that minefield That's and to approach it in a way that is honest and direct without being a thought to be taking one side or another in a way that's improper. That's such an enormous part of this problem, and I think we can all agree on that, that the, the charges of anti-Semitism, the charges of being anti-Jewish, they're, they're quick to come to that conclusion in this debate, and they certainly haven't, and nobody wants to be tagged with that. Come that, 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 I mean, come that's on. it. It's us versus them yeah. kind of mentality, and that will always lose. In the end, it will lose. Okay, and well, here, here's what we know is losing. Mm -hmm. 29,000 Hasidim children are going to private school with their educations paid for, and the black and Latino kids are stuck in horrible public schools where money that's supposed to help them is going to help the Hasidim children. Okay, we got, That's the bottom line. We've got to take a break. We'll use that as the bottom line. We'll take a quick break and pivot. Up next, lots of people were freaking out because Hillary Clinton wasn't speaking out, but after a month of silence, she's finally answered questions from the press. Is avoiding the media a good strategy? It's not good for our business, but is it good for the political class? That's next.